your arms by your side. Keep your arm by your side when you walk. You know, you don't, then when you stand, you know, there are ways to do things. There are, there are postures that have uh, meanings to people. Postures communicate, you know, they are languages. You are talking with your posture. That's what I'm trying to say. You are talking with your posture. When you stand straight, there's a message you are communicating. When you stand and you cross your hand, there's a message you're also communicating. Then don't be in a hurry to do anything. Be, you know, just take things one time after the other. You know, when you're in a hurry, then you cannot be, well, you cannot talk of points when you're always rushing. Be gentle, smile. Don't fidget with your hands. Don't fidget. When you fidget, you're trying to tell the person that you're in a hurry or you're not interested in what the person is saying. Then, you know, there's something about a first, first impression, which they say lasts longer. You know, your first impression, anytime you, you meet someone for the first time, make sure you are in your best. You are in your best. Being your best doesn't mean, it's not only the way you are dressed, but the way you are postured. Then respect others and the things around you. Posture, like I said, is a position in which we hold our bodies while we are standing while we are sitting, while we are lying down. Healthy, healthy posture is the correct alignment of body parts supported by the right amount of muscle tension against gravity. You know, how important is, 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 uh, is, is this um, is good posture? How important is proper posture to our professional image? We are all business people. Sometimes we, are, we work from the office, sometimes we work from anywhere, but we're all doing one business or the other. Some of us have staff, some of us are members of, this, of staff. You know, you need to improve the image you project. The image who you say you are will, will, will be measured by the way you comport yourself. You can be either attractive or inattractive. You have to be professional with the way you work. It, it helps reduce the risk of neck injuries and back pain. It minimizes fatigue and pain from aching joints. You love the benefits of getting more air for better breathing. You know, it prevents improper spinal alignment, which can lead to headaches and discomfort. So, you know, a, a, a wrong posture, wrong posture can lead to, I mean, people having headaches. Sometimes you don't know why you're having headache. This is one of the reasons. It improves your self-esteem. You know, you, you feel good when you are well postured. It helps your blood circulation. It helps your food digestion. It helps your uh, uh, air breathing and waste elimination. It helps you to focus better and be more productive at work. When you, when you are well postured, you sit properly, you stand properly, you do things right, then it will help you with your work. Uh, in the office. So how to ensure you are sitting and standing properly? Sitting posture, most of us, you know, we are used to too much, we, we sit for too long in front of the computer. We sit too long with our phones. You know, we are always, always busy with everything. We are fidgeting one, with one thing or the other. We have our phones, we are always looking at Instagram, doing one thing or the other on the phone. But the way you pose yourself, really, really, really matters. You know, it can lead to back pain and other things, like I said. For this reason, good posture is important when you are sitting in the office, when you are sitting on the chair, when you are sitting at your workstation. You must not sit carelessly. You sit, you sit with your laps together. A man sits with his, with his two laps together. When a man is not sitting with two laps, then he, he seems to be careless in the way he's sitting. He's not taken seriously. So a man should sit and put his two laps together. A woman, a lady, we call ourselves ladies. A lady sits, you know, if you know you are wearing something short, it's not okay to cross your legs at the ankle. And again, you know, it's, there, there are some veins, varicose veins that come as a result of that, that. But the best way a lady should sit is with your laps together, and you cross your, your ankles. Let the crossing be at the ankle. Then you should implement a user-friendly workplace. You know, adjust your table the way it suits you better, adjust your chair, 
adjust things that will make your sitting position comfortable. Then you keep your shoulder back and relaxed. When you sit, you keep your shoulder and your back relaxed. You rest your wrist on the desk and keep your feet flat on the floor. You sit in a way that you feel comfortable and also professional. You are professional about everything and you are sophisticated. You are not ordinary. You are not, you know, you are not, you don't, you don't walk. You don't do things like an ordinary person because God has created us special. Then you make yourself special. The way you sit, you sit up, you stand tall. Take a breath, you know, take a break from sitting. When you sit too long, I hear um, uh, it, that's another smoking. Sitting for too long is another way of smoking nowadays. That's what I hear. You take a break. You know, sometimes you need, you can keep your phone, your, your phone, keep it on another table. If you have the time that is said that, you know, you, you, you're always sitting down. So you can keep your phone on another table such that when your phone rings, you will be, I mean, forced to stand up to go and get the phone. You know, you don't sit for too long. Try to take a break. Then your standing posture, you can promote a good standing posture by maintaining the, you know, natural curve of the spine. I understand it is S. So when you sit, you should do it well. Then your chest out, your, your, your back to, to, to uh, touch the chair. You keep your shoulders directly over your pelvis, tucking your buttocks. Position one foot slightly in front of the other and slightly apart. Tighten your core abdominal muscles. Stand tall and confident, confident. You know, even we ladies, some of us that have big tummies, we are working on it. But you notice that when you are working, you can hold your tummy. Me, I practice this every time. When I'm working, I, you know, you're talking. By the time you're talking, your tummy, your shoulders will go up. When your shoulders go up slightly, then there is a kind of confidence that comes with it. Then you stand, you walk tall. There is a confidence that comes with walking tall. I mean, it, it gives a lot of confidence. So when we say stand like this, don't sit like that, don't slouch, don't do this, don't do that. You know, proper posture includes maintaining proper stance and spine alignment. It's not just for health purposes, but it's also it will also affect our image at work and even our productivity. It will affect our productivity. I'll tell you, having a good posture will affect your productivity. It will affect you as a businessman. It will affect everything around you. If only you can stand well and sit well and keep yourself good. So it is good health-wise and it is also good um, for your productivity and for um, your confidence. Thank you very much. Maybe I'll take more when the questions come in. Thank you so much, Ma. That was very enlightening. And I was actually trying to type down some of the insights shared. Um, we talked about three major principles of etiquette. We have um, consideration, respect, and honesty. And, you know, when you talked about consideration, I was really interested in that because uh, when we are talking about pollution these days, we have noise pollution, we have air pollution. So, and we are the ones actually polluting our air. We are the ones creating the noise as well. So um, etiquette is very closely linked to hygiene. And that's why even when we're talking about um, respiratory hygiene, we also call it cough etiquette which means coughing into a handkerchief or coughing into your elbow or, you know, if you see someone that just sneezes without consideration of other people, that's not acceptable. Um, it shows that that person has not really taken um, consideration of the people around. Okay, and then um, respect, saying thank you, excuse me, those things are so important, very important. Standing to greet, um, someone comes in, you stand up to greet. I think th those are very essential things that um, we should also make sure our children practice and don't take people for granted. It sends a message to the people um, around. And then talking about heels, not more than three inches. I don't know whether you have an example to show us before we leave here. You know, if we're going to measure three inches, 
Um, for I myself, I, I, I can't stick with heels for too long. I wear them for very short periods, but I, I don't think I've ever taken time to measure my heels. I think after today, I would like to, to measure my heels. I like the fact that you also said that we shouldn't be hasty. We should be gentle. We should, you know, do things um, lady -like. um, in a ladylike and manner, manner. In a gentle manner. Yes. And it's interesting, but I, I think you are right about um, the fact that um, your posture aids your digestion. One of the things we recommend for people is that after a meal, you know, maybe you have taken a meal, you've sat down for a few minutes, you should stand up and move around. And that's why we don't want people going to bed late. If you go to bed late on a full stomach, you end up with indigestion. So yes, your posture has a lot to do with digestion and being able to move your bowel. Um, there was a, a study, um, even though I don't know how many studies um, have been carried out to that effect, but um, there was a lady that presented at a TED talk and she said that they studied um, the postures of people, of various individuals. And they discovered that when people maintain an upright posture, they discovered that um, certain hormones in their bodies tended to go up, you know, and those hormones had to do with um, a feeling of well-being, you know, a feeling better, a better mood. So th there is likely to be a correlation. Maybe we, we should look for more studies in that area. When you sit up, I was, one, once we were speaking, Ma, I was trying to check my posture. Now, is my back well aligned? Are my shoulders straight, you know? Is, are my shoulders above my pelvis? You know, I was checking. I think those are things that um, are quite interesting, but it will actually help a lot of us. And I, I look forward to our questions. I can see that some questions are already coming in um, in the chat box. And um, I think for now, what we'll just do is that we'll take um, the insights from... Um, um, Reverend Dr. Abatunde, he will discuss with us about um, posture as it relates to physiotherapy, as it relates to his own practice, you know, especially in seeing patients. And then we'll now come to a question and answer session. But we so much appreciate those insights, Ma. And we'll still look forward to you um, doing a little summary for us um, at the end of this. Okay, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So I want to welcome um, Reverend Dr. Ogudumade. Yeah, welcome, sir. Yes, good evening, ma. It's nice yes, being sir. with you. I all... introduced him earlier for those of us who are just joining us. Let me just use this opportunity to welcome um, other members of LCI and um, other friends and associates who are joining us. This is Lifestyle Champions International. And um, we are trying to raise like-minded individuals who are passionate about making healthy lifestyle choices. And this has to do with what to eat, what to drink, how you carry yourself on a daily basis, your, your relationships with people, all of these are tied to your well-being. And so today we're talking about posture and etiquette. We just listened to Mrs. Modupe Aguda, who is a, an etiquette consultant. And um, she has shared um, insights with us just as I try to summarize um, a few minutes ago. And now we have Reverend Dr. Um, Ogundu Made, who is um, a physiotherapist as well as a human physiologist and is the head of the cardiopulmonary um, unit at the University of Joss Teaching Hospital. We're glad to have you, sir. Thank you very much, so, Ma. Set the ball rolling now. Thank you very much, Ma. It's nice being around. I want to greet every one of us. I want to greet uh, our moderator for today, Dr. Mrs. Moyo Makinde. Thank you very much, Ma, for the opportunity to be around this evening. I also want to appreciate uh, my co-presenter, Mrs. Uh, Modupe Aguda, who has uh, done a lot with regards to this uh, presentation this evening. Uh, I begin this issue of uh, posturing and etiquette with million dollar question. I have a $3 million question that I want us to look at. 
The first one is, uh, what is your posture like? The second one is, do you love eels or sitting at your computer and television all day long? And the third question I will want us to, I will want us to answer, maybe by ourselves, though quietly, is social etiquette may favor IA, but does it have overwhelming health benefits? Our social culture may promote or might have been promoting the use of IA, but does it have overwhelming health benefits? I want to look at the definition that has been given over time to posture. Posture is seen as the total carriage of the body, either in sitting position or in standing position, which is ensured through the coordinated action of the muscles on the skeletal framework with the intention of good stability, either in standing or sitting position against gravity. So it's a totality of a lot of things. The body is brought into alignment and the alignment is such that the spine must be kept straight. We've talked about the S posture. There are three curves that are notable if one is going to maintain good posture. There is a cough at the neck. There is a cough at the upper back, or also called middle back. There is also a cough at the low back. The cough at the neck goes inside, and that's what we call lordosis. Uh, it is a bit dented inside, but if posture, good posture is not uh, achieved or maintained, it will either be flattened or it becomes so exaggerated, more dented inside. We have also another cough at the mid back or the upper, upper, uh, uh, upper back. That cough is like S, like a little inch at the back, upper back there. Now, that's the way God has created us. And that's what gives that S posture. Now, the upper back, by the time we begin to abuse our sitting posture or probably also standing posture and walking posture, it begins to get more inch. And that's why you see the back, somebody's back somebody's chest begin to cave in and the back begin to pull more backwards. And we also have the third cough, which is at the low back. The third cough that is low back has a little dent inside. That is what we call lordosis. And the lordosis there, if posture is not maintained, can either become flattened, can either become flattened or it can become so much dented inside as a result of posture. Now, what we are talking about is that these three spinal levels are very important. The spinal level at the neck, the spinal level at the upper back, and the spinal level at the low back. They are the one that helps to maintain good posture. And for somebody to have good posture, you must be able to hold your head above your shoulders. I know people that are English inclined, they might have probably come across that before. Of course, posture actually speaks volume. It talks about uh, somebody's total courage in life, but also in society. When somebody looks at somebody's posture, I say, this, is, this one has confidence. Now, the, we often said in the English palace that he is able to hold his head above his shoulders, but that is taken from the posture, posture perspective. Now, when you have good posture, when somebody has good posture, the person must be able to hold his head well above his shoulders in such a way that the back too is also well supported and the head and the upper back is head in front, in up, uh, uppermost to the, to, the, to the hips. Now, there are factors that affect proper posture. The factors that affect proper posture, there are four that I'm going to outline here, which I want us to take note of. The first one is physiological factors. And this has to do the with the muscles, the skeleton, the influence of fatigue and age. This four in one is what is termed as the physiological factors. And they are a bit cyclical. Uh, it, it, when you look at the picture of a diagram, it will be the picture of a diagram of the brain controlling the muscle action, the muscle acting upon the skeletal structure, and the skeletal structure will produce some physiological uh, uh, effect. And the physiological effect that is produced will determine whether the brain is going to fire more, to the, go to instruct the muscle more, to be able to act more and continue its muscular action. So that is the first factor that affects posture. We call it physiological factor. For quick remembrance, anytime you remember physiological factors that affect posture, you must be thinking in terms of the muscle, you must think in terms of the skeleton, you must think in terms of the influence of fatigue. And that's why somebody is, uh, has had a very busy day. 
you see that the posture of that person at the end of work may not be the same posture at the beginning of work. In the, in the morning, it's exhibiting, it's exhibiting a, lot of, a lot of confidence, a lot of energy. But in the course of the day, a lot of energy has gone. The muscle have become uh, so fatigued in the process of time. They will not be able to fire the way they were supposed to. They were firing before, and they will not be able to hold the body in the right percent, uh, perspective, as we are discussing. And also age comes under the physiological, uh, physiological factor. What happens is with age is that the muscle fibers are losing with age. That, that, that's what we call aging effects on the system, physiological effects. And as a result of that aging effect, with the muscle getting uh, smaller, the muscle too will not be able to do as much as it's supposed to be. And they will not be able to hold. In fact, one of the things we take into consideration in the management of back pain is we want to examine the strength of the back muscles, whether it's still able to guard the back, hold the back in shape very well. So that's the first factor that affects posture, physiological factor. The second factor is psychological factor. And that has to do with the state of the mind. The people around you, your surrounding. You notice some people when they are walking, when some people are within their surrounding, they begin to miss their step. And in fact, that's one of the things we look at when I do analysis of gait. I want to do it in an unsuspecting manner where the person does not even know that I'm looking at him or her. That gives me a clearer picture of the walking pattern of that particular person. So we have psychological factors that affect posture. The state of the mind of that person, whether that person is still uh, exhibiting a lot of confidence or the person is disturbed, and that's why you see when somebody is disturbed, you see the head of the person droops. And that's why some people that are, 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 are psychologically inclined, they can read somebody's uh, mood through his posture. And his head, the person you know that has been able to hold his head above the shoulder, and suddenly he's drooping his head, and I say, is anything wrong with you? And that is what we mean by psychological factor. Then the third factor is a mixture of the two. Which you call psychophysiological factor. You have the two, the first two I described, I, descri I, uh, I described earlier on, coming together as a factor. The person has a psychological uh, factor surrounding him, and also physiological factor surrounding him. And the last of it is the training factor. And when I explain the training factor, I want us to look at the effect of physical training on the body. Physical training actually promotes body. And you know, in, in, in the lifestyle medicine now, one of the domains that we lay emphasis on is physical activity, the use of exercise as a medicine in the management condition and also in order to, to stay healthy. You discover that people that are, that, are, that are into physical training, they are able to hold their body very well. I'm sure you've seen uh, bodybuilders before. You see the way they stand. They stand very tall. They stand very huge. They stand in a way that people respect them and they, people even want to run away from them that, that you can't do anything to this at all. So posture as a way of helping people. Posture as a way of, uh, sorry, training as a way of making you to stand very tall. So anytime any of these four factors is tampered with, the posture is going to be affected, whether physiological factor or psychological factor or psychophysiological factor or training factor. So I don't want us to forget that. Now, what are the features of a good posture? I want us to take note of five things that are features of good posture. We have good muscle flexibility. Good muscle flexibility, when your muscle can move very freely, it can twist, it can turn. I don't mean dangerous twisting that is going to cause you joint problem or capsular problem or ligamentous problem. I mean, just be able to move your hand, move your any part of your body freely. That's what I mean, flexibility. So it is one of the things that you see in good posture. The second thing is also the joint of that person is free and is able to go through the normal range that God has created it to be. Then we also have strong muscles. The muscles are not lax. The muscles are head firm on the body. And it's a such a way that when you touch them, they are not too loose and they are not too hard. When the muscle, when you touch some muscle, when, when you touch it and it becomes supple, it means that that muscle is losing strength. It means it will not be able to carry the body very well. So those are the first three I've mentioned features of good posture. The first one is good muscle uh, flexibility. The second one is the good range of motion. The third one is uh, strong muscles itself. The fourth one is balance of the muscles of the spine on both sides. Now, one of the things that happens also in back pain is when you see a stronger muscle pulling towards its own side, like tug of war. Now, when the back muscles are both strong on the right and the left, there is good balance, the spine will be in good position. But when one of them is, uh, is, is weak, let's assume that the, 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 the left is weak, you see a slouching towards that particular side. And then the last feature of a good posture is the awareness of the posture itself. 
the person is aware of good posture and he holds his courage. I'm sure you see people that have fed their courage. Nothing can disturb the way their posture is. They are aware of their posture. So those five factors are what you see in good posture. Now let's look at uh, what is discussed as postural dysfunction or poor posture. This is actually extensive. The features of poor posture is seen when the spine is positioned in an unnatural way. There's a natural way that the spine should be positioned. It should be in a straight position in such a way that the S curve will be maintained. Don't forget the three levels of curve that I told you about, the neck, the upper back, and the low back. That is the way the spine is created now. When it is now held in an unnatural position, you begin to have what is called postural dysfunction or poor posture. And what you see, what are the, the factors that cause this poor posture? A lack of education. When somebody is not aware of what we are talking about now, the person is, you know, when you don't have knowledge, there is a tendency for abuse. And that is why that's underscored the importance of this program that we are having today. To be able to educate, to make our populace to know what they're supposed to know about posture and how they can remedy one or two things if it's already there. So when there is lack of knowledge or lack of awareness to correct posture, there could be poor posture. Also sedentary life. When somebody is not doing anything, somebody is just sitting down all the time, sleeping all the time, no level of activity, the person is, is uh, there is a tendency for that person to have a poor posture. We also have occupational demands. We have people, high executive, top executive that sit so long on their, on their seat throughout the day. It's recommended, I want us to take note of it. It's recommended that after 30 to 40 minutes, you stand up from your, from your, from your seat. In your office, even if you don't have calls to go and to the next office to do anything, stand up. I want to tell you I practice this a lot. I don't sit too long on, on my seat. At intervals like that, I get out of my office. Even if I don't get, get anything, though, I take a little walk. I come back because sedentary uh, occupational demands can make you to have poor posture in the process of time. Also, joint stiffness can be a, a conservative factor for postural dysfunction. We also have issues like somebody having decreased fitness, the person is not fit enough. Of course, this can be linked to the, 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 the reduced functional life of that person. We have muscle weakness. We have the issue of tightness of the muscle. When your muscles are tight, and that's why some people like uh, the, the protocol called massage, to so loosen out the muscles that are tight there so that they can become loosened. Don't forget one of the with a fiction I told you of earlier on concerning good posture is flexibility. But once there is muscle tightness, there cannot be flexibility. And until the tightness is released, there will not be good posture. So another factor, another positive factor for postural dysfunction is poor core stability. When the back muscles and the buttock muscles, they are not strong enough, the person cannot have a good posture. Then two more, let me quickly talk about two more, and then I will now focus one on one, particularly in this discussion before we begin to settle down. The, is the issue of poor ergonomic workstations. Most of our offices are not suitable for health purpose. Uh, in fact, pro, uh, most of the time, the procurement of seats and the procurement of table is done mo mostly on the, on the, on the arrow of uh, aesthetics, of beauty, not necessarily on the arrow of uh, uh, health promotion. And I will advocate, as which is one of the essence of this kind of uh, educational that we are having, that uh, before such proto, uh, purchases are made, people should, uh, people uh, that are vast in this field of economics, must be consulted so that they will be able to recommend for the for the for the for the for the, for the system the kind of seats they're supposed to get and the kind of table they're supposed to get. I will touch briefly on that before I round up at this this evening. And of course, the last causative factor for postural dysfunction is issue of shoes, which I will focus on in the course of this. Now, let's look at postural dysfunction due to the eaves. What are the things that usually happen when you have eye issue? I tell you that the higher the heel, the higher the risk of low back and upper back pain and joint pain. The higher the heel, the higher the risk of you having low back pain, upper back pain, and other joint pains. And we must know that also there will be a lot of structural defects that will begin to happen in the different parts of the body. The foot will become angulated. The joints will, be, will get out of alignment. The body will get distorted. There will be te increased tendency for fall because we have reduced stability. Don't forget the, po the definition I gave to posture at the beginning of this, uh, of the, of, of this discussion. I said, in such a way that there is good stability against the effect of gravity. But once you have high yield, the higher the yield, and the narrower the yield, the more the tendency to have increased fall. And fall on its own has a lot of uh, consequences. 
I've been able to do a write-up sometimes ago on fall and the sequelae of fall. When somebody fall, there, there, there's, there's a tendency for, it could be high impact fall, it could be low impact fall. Say for that person if it's low impact fall. But if it's high impact fall, it could be more fatal and more dangerous. And that will have a lot of economic implication apart from the health consequences for that particular person. Now, I want to ask a very interesting question from us, which I want you to answer silently. Does IE have any good thing for us? Or maybe, maybe, maybe some five things. But you know, we have this uh, benefits uh, analysis issue. If your disadvantage outweighs your advantage, then you know there's no, thing, there, there, there's no need to go, to, to go and begin to use such a process. But let me see, in order to be fair enough, in order to show justice, let me not paint a completely gloomy picture about the issue of IE. Let me highlight five things that talks uh, that are the import, uh, shows the goodness that you can see in IE. It's fashionable, and probably that's the reason why some people want it. They say it's fashionable. They want people to look at them. Then they have the issue of height gain. So probably with all apology, maybe short people will want to use IE in order to be able to gain height. Some do use it really. Then the third one is that it gets attraction. Once somebody use IE, you mean every focus is on that person. Maybe some psychologically, some people use it because of that reason. Also, some, it confers some a little bit of self-confidence in the office when you see people using IE. And the last of it is that it can also make your calf huge. That's why you see the back of the leg of such ladies that uses it, that the back of that leg, that's where we have that muscle we call calf muscles. They are usually huge, very big. Now, but I want to also look at the fact that it is a fashion at a cost. I've told you that it's fashionable, but it's a fashion at a cost. And what are the costs? of this fashion. The full cost of this fashion is compensatory postural alignment. The person, you know, there's no vacuum in nature. The person now wants to adopt the next possible posture that is going to help the person out. And that's what we thought in terms of compensatory postural adjustment. It's not going to be normal, normal postural again. The person is struggling to maintain a posture. And that's what's called compensatory postural adjustment. The next thing is that there will be stress. Stress in nearly all the joints. The hip is involved, the knee is involved, the ankle is involved, the low back is involved, the upper back is involved, the middle back is involved, the neck is involved. Everything becomes distorted with time. I will now, because of this stress, and you know, we are one of the things we promote to is less stress to the body because it has its own dangerous uh, psycho, uh, uh, physiological effect on the body. In fact, the more the stress somebody passes through, the more the reduce for the tendency for reduced life expectancy of that person. So somebody that is not given to perpetual issue of IE, that is now struggling with every part of his body all the time, there's a tendency for that person to begin to have a lot of stress. And uh, that's why when we are doing assessment, we are doing history taking for people we may begin to look at their shoe too, whether they have an uh, issue with their shoe that has given them stress over time. So apart from the issue of stress on the hip flexor, on the bending, the muscles that are the hip and the knee, there's also the issue of like somebody is trying to struggle to maintain a balance. I'm sure some of us, we have watched pictorials and films before that somebody is trying to walk on like a thumb line. And that is the picture of somebody that is using IE. The person is like, is walking on a balance beam, which requires a lot of balance to be able to maintain. The ankle has a tendency for risk. I have seen people before that sustain a, a lower ankle fracture as a result of eye ill use because the ankle can easily get twisted. That's the foot, can easily get twisted. The ankle in soul is not performing the function that is created for, to perform ordinarily. And also we have increased tendency for fall because the higher the height, the more the tendency to fall and also the narrower the base. There's something we call BOS. BOS is the base of support. And now the, 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 the deep BOS, nothing less than one foot. Now, when you begin to have a, a narrower, a narrower eye yield, the person has reduced base of support. And with reduced base of support, there will be increased tendency to fall for that person. Of course, we have shortened muscles. The muscle becomes shortened. And in the process of time, that has to be taken care of. The, the shoe to the foot to has a lot of pressure. In fact, like what is called that, uh, it's like boxing the foot toes into a box. You see the way some of those shoes are manufactured. The mouth is like this, pointed like this, and all the toes are just compacted together inside that particular little space that is made available, which creates a lot of pressure on the toes, and it is not actually comfortable at all. Now, what are the striking balance that we're supposed to have? 
I call it striking safety balance. Striking safety balance is very, very important. I want us to take note of it. Now, what are these striking safety balance? We must not feel pain in order to look good. I keep telling people, you don't live your life to satisfy the society. You don't live your life to satisfy people. You are the one that holds your body. You know when you begin to give you a signals and you need to take caution at that particular instant. So nobody should, you should feel pain in order to look good, in order to, 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 to keep to the societal etiquette. It is not the best for such a person. Now, we must also not create perpetual habit of using high issue. It's a good testimony that I hear in the course of this program when we first started that uh, uh, our uh, moderator says she really uses it. That's a good testimony. I will look forward to getting such more testimony from people. The third thing is that we must reserve our IE. If at all we want to use IE, let us reserve them for special occasion. We must reserve them to special occasion. We must not make it Monday to, uh, Monday to Sunday, Sunday to Monday, all the time we begin to use it. And it's like 24 seven throughout the 24 hours of the day. When we do that, we have more risks that we have explained uh, earlier on, people suffering from salt. Then we also have uh, uh, one of the suggestions I want to give is that uh, you, you use what I call wear commuter shoes. You have a shoe that you are going to wear. If at all you are going to party, you want to wear a high shoe, take that particular, uh, what I call commuter shoe with you. Wear it outside your house. Where take your high heel, put it inside your bag. When you get to your ceremony, go and use your high heel. And then when, once you finish, don't walk out of the ceremony with your IE. Put it back in your bag and use your commuter shoe. Then we should also have this habit of occasional taking off of shoe during the days. When you are in the office, you can take it off. That, that's why some people have some other shoe too, that commuter shoe inside their shoe. They want to do a little work in their corridor. They will wear that commuter shoe so that they will not have to prolong hours on the issue of the IE shoe. Then we also have uh, the issue of the need for us to wear so to wear flat shoe regularly. Let's wear flat shoe regularly. It helps a lot. It increases our stability and reduces the incidence of fall. Then we there is issue of there is could be high yield narrow narrow base. There could be high yield wider base. If at all you are going to use high yield shoe, let it have some wider base. In that instant, increases your what I call the base of support and will reduce the tendency to fall. And then we, there is a need to practice foot exercises. We need to practice a lot of foot exercises. To that instant, your physiotherapist will be able to uh, uh, condition you to that, will be able to train you on how to, how to do those exercises. That is, the essence of that is to strengthen the ankle muscles, to strengthen the foot muscles, and also to release, to stretch the tight ankle muscles so that they will be able to gain their flexibility, that they will be able to perform their normal physiological roles as has been assigned unto them. And lastly, we must attend to any musculoskeletal pain that we have. Now, I want you to have this take home about this issue of shoe as it affects the posture. And I put it this way. Don't alter your normal postural curves. Keep your shoe in check. Don't alter your normal postural curves. Keep your shoe in check. Now, before I finally round up this, uh, uh, this discussion with us, I want to look at office seating etiquette office sitting etiquette because it's nice too that I visit this aspect so that it will may be able to put everything in perspective and you'll be able to help us. Don't forget that in the process of the, uh, the, the uh, giving definition to posture, I gave definition to postural in standing, I gave definition to postural in sitting. So it is needful that we look at the issue of office sitting etiquette. And actually, no, woman body is created to be in upright position. There's a lot of physiological advantage that is gain in sitting in, in sitting in upright position, in standing in upright position. And it, what are the advantages? It, it, it helps the heart function. It helps the cardiovascular system. It helps our bowel movement too. And it was said earlier on there by our, our moderator, you can't eat food and go to bed immediately. The bowel activity is going to be impaired. So uh, human body, when it stands upright, the bowel activity, the movement of the stomach is a uh, is a uh, uh, what do you call it peristaltic action is uh, is en is enhanced. Also, it ensures physical activity. When we are in upright position, it ensures physical activity. Don't forget, all over the world now, the song is there must be increased physical activity. As I round up this, I want us to know that prolonged sitting is done at a cost. And the cost of prolonged sitting are this. There's fluid retention. There's weight gain. 
there is swollen leg, there is aching feet, there is also the tendency for heart disease, the tendency for diabetes, there's tendency for high blood pressure, there's tendency for musculoskeletal pain, there's tendency for weakness of the muscle, there's tendency for the tightness of the muscle if you sit long. Therefore, if your office work, if your occupation, or occupation require you to sit for long, I have this suggestion for you before I begin to round up. And I put it as resetting office sitting etiquette. Reset it, reset. If there's anything that COVID-19 has actually taught us, is the need to reset. We need to reset. We need to reboot. We need to reset the office sitting etiquette. And what can we do to reset the office sitting etiquette? How can we achieve this? I name these following things that has to do with changes in our lifestyle. We need to modify our lifestyle. Before I round up, I'll give us a catching statement that talks about need for us to remodify our lifestyle. But what are these things we need to do to reset our sitting etiquette? The first thing is that 30, set 30 minutes alarm. To, to get you up from your sitting position. Get your alarm into your wristwatch or into your phone or in whatever system within your office there that will make you to sit, to stand up every 30, 30 minutes. The second thing is that take a walk around your office. If, if, if I, I know we are getting out of the age, we have this table phone, but if you still have table phone in your office, if you have intercom in your office, don't let that your intercom be on the table where you are seated. Let that your intercom be on a structure far off from you. In which instance is going to force you to stand up by the time a call comes into your intercom. What the, the other thing we need to do is intermittent work within your office, even if you don't want to leave your office. I tell you that I don't sit long in my office. It's been an age-long practice. I stand up, I walk around, I come back onto the office because I know all this negative effect of prolonged sitting. Then you must also stand while watching television. I know most of our offices have television, though it's not all the time we watch it. Maybe you want to pick news or the other, but if you want to watch it, please ensure that you do it in standing. And then when we are making purchases for our offices, and particularly if you have a, and a, a, if you have, a, if, if, if you are put in confidence to make a choice on the seat that you are going to have, make a good choice of seat. Get a standing desk or high office table to use, not the one that will condense you or box you up in all the time. Then you must go for a walk. Then you must walk up and down the staircase. Don't up for lift. Don't work for lift. I, I, I share this testimony because, you know, as, as, as practitioners, what we do a lot, we share the testimony of our life to, to, to instill confidence in people and to show to them that we also we have lived that for them to learn from us and be able to do what we're asking them to do. I've been in a system before that has uh, uh, about six, eight-story buildings. Then it also has two other-story buildings basements. And it has a good functioning, uh, what do you call it, uh, lift system. I will opt at times not to go for the lift system. I will want to walk down that staircase because it has some benefits even for the health of that individual. And I enjoy myself in that instances. And I also want to recommend that uh, apart from walking downstairs in your establishment, you must be able to practice back, uh, back exercises from time to time. When I sit for long, what I do is that uh, I'm sure you are seeing me, you talk in your back and you release it. You talk in your back, you release it. You talk in your back, you release it about five times intermittently like that. That's so to say redistribute the pressure that is on your back. So by the time you redistribute the pressure intermittently like that on your back, you will reduce the tendency for back pain and also tightness of the muscle, which is a possibility in a back pain. Lastly, I want to leave you with this word. Reset your lifestyle today. There's a need for you to reset your lifestyle for LDR etiquette. God bless you. Thank you very much. Wow, wow. Let's put our hands together for Reverend Dr. Ogudumade. Thank you so much, sir, for that insightful lecture. I was trying to write, you know, and to catch up with you as you were discussing. And um, if I was going to summarize um, what you shared with us so far, is that there are several factors that um, affect our posture and they can be physiological, um, such as due to muscle skeleton, influence of uh, fatigue or tiredness after work and age. We have the psychological factors that have to do with the state. <clears throat> Excuse me, of the mind. The training factors. So when um, I, I want to believe that
that this is a training for us. And um, I would even call it a back school, <laughs> a back school <laughs> training, because some of the things that we have learned today, honestly, um, except to really go to a classroom and sit down, you might not be able to get all this information. So, but we have, we have learned that um, our poor posture um, can be as a result of positioning our spine in an unnatural way. So we need to seek for way our spine. Our spine must be positioned in a natural way. And um, how do we do that? I think um, our speaker has already outlined a number of things, especially when it comes to resetting office etiquette. He has talked about setting an alarm, a 30 minute alarm. This is something I practice as well. In fact, I set my alarm for um, every 20 minutes. Once I know I have to be on my laptop, you know, to do something for a long period of time, you know, I would set my alarm. So every 20 minutes it beeps. And you know what I do, even though it might be funny, I will get up and I will do about five to 10 jumping jacks in the middle of my bedroom. And then I come back and sit down. Sometimes I get up, I go and get a drink of water. You know, sometimes I just take a walk around the room or do something and come back and sit down. So just like, um, Mrs. Aguda was saying earlier, sitting has been compared to the new smoking. So when we sit for a long time, we tend to slouch, we tend to take all sorts of funny positions, which at the end of the day, affect this muscle flexibility um, that um, our speaker just mentioned. Standing while watching TV. <laughs> In fact, that is something that uh, I'm sure is new to a lot of us. The times when I see people standing in front of the TV is when there's a football match going on. And you would think that the people watching, they want to enter the, the screen to even kick the ball for the people um, who are um, playing the match. But this is something to take into consideration. Um, medically, we will say don't watch TV more than two hours in a day. I'm sure a lot of us don't have time for that, but even our children and uh, people who tend to watch TV, they should be schooled to know that sitting down to watch TV for that amount of time can have its consequences you know, um, as have been highlighted. Don't opt for lift. So you have a lift, you have the staircase, take the staircase. Um, practice back exercises. I was just trying to practice back, uh, back exercise now. Maybe we should all do that. Can we do that for a few minutes? Can you take us through that, um, Mr. Uh, uh, Pastor Gundumari? Let's go through that back exercise. I think I want to practice it. And I think some of us here would want to know how to practice it. Before Move your chest off. forward as if you look, want to look at your screen, then you come back. Okay. Okay. Move it forward. I'm sorry. Put your hand at your low back. Put your hand at your low back. Okay, at the low you back. see movement there. Is, is there movement or there's no movement? There's movement. Yeah, so you go do back. like five. Five is enough five. for you. And you do that five intermittently. Maybe every 10, 10 minutes you do it. That reduces the effective pressure effective weight that your back is going to carry unlike if you have to sit like that for eight hours in the day without doing this stuff for him and also it ensures that there will be flexibility of your back muscles it eases up the issue of back muscle tightness that i talked about earlier on thank, thank you ma'am thank you sir that, that is very educative and very helpful um so can we look at the questions um i think we have some questions in the chat box Sorry, I'm trying to get out the questions. So I have one that says, so how do we reconcile the advice on wearing three inch heels and not wearing heels? Well, I, I think um, he has thrown some light on that, even though I would like to know what three inches looks like. Um, I'm hoping that um, our first speaker, Mrs. Aguda, will help us with that. But from what our second speaker said, um, we're not throwing out heels, but we're trying to look at the regularity and the timing because it's when you wear it for prolonged periods that it can lead to this um, imbalance and tendency to fall and twists in the, in the ankle and all of that. But I welcome uh, Mrs. Aguda to please answer that question. 
on how we reconcile the advice on wearing three inch heels and not wearing heels. Okay, thank yeah, you well, again, Ma. Um, I think he, uh, he, he said so many things about the heels. Um, well, talking from the etiquette angle, I know when you wear flat, flat shoes, you know, you don't, you don't have that courage. But um, while he was talking, I just remember that men's shoes have heels. <laughs> men's shoes have heels. I'm sure they, they know what they're doing. Although the origin of uh, heels for men's shoes is for them to be able to ride on the horse or something. But up till now, they still make shoes with heels. Most shoes for men are made with heels. So the, 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 um, I think the heel for men are quite, they are quite uh, the uh, wide. lower or shorter. Okay. You know, wide, then shorter, maybe, maybe two inches, maybe two inches. But for you to get three inches, and he said also, like you mentioned that, if you have high issues, if you have to wear high issues, intermittently remove them. You know, maybe when you're in the office, although while I was working with the bank, I see bank uh, ladies at the bank now dropping the, their shoes to wear flat slippers all over the place, which is not good. That is not office etiquette. You know, if you go to the bank, go to offices, and you see people wearing flat shoes, you know, they will, they will, they will have the tendency of walking carelessly. But if you have, it, 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 it has a way of controlling the way you carry yourself. It controls your carriage. So it doesn't, it's not good for it to be high. When it is too high, it will affect you. But three inches, I, I tried to get something of three inches and I got what everybody will have. Your Naira note, this size, the length, is three inches, it's three inches. Anything higher than this, I don't think it's okay for the ladies, it's not okay. But this is just okay. And if you want to go lower, you can go for one inch, but at least I know that uh, there are some, for, for doctors and for uh, physiotherapists, I know some people have what they call, um, I don't remember what they call it now, that you cannot wear flat shoes, it will affect you, it must, come up a bit. I know people that that's in effect. You must wear something that's a little bit, it was get off the floor, get off the floor. So um, to balance it, your heels should not be more than three inches. And for, for uh, etiquette reasons, you need to have something come up a little bit, not really flat. Not that you cannot wear flat shoes, but you know where you are wearing your flat shoes. I wouldn't say, okay, maybe when you're at the house, you wear any high heel. When you're going to the office, when you're going for occasions, at least dress to um, dress for that occasion. Wear something that will carry you, that will give you confidence as a lady. You know, a, a lady is quite different from a man. You need to comport yourself. Some people cannot walk properly, except they have something to help them. And when you have high heel shoes, not more than three inches, it helps boost your confidence. You carry yourself high. And the only, I mean, and, and wearing high issues is not the only thing that causes back pain. The way you bend, the way you bend to pick something, these are the things that contribute to back pains also, not just high heel shoes. You bend, you don't, you don't bend, you, 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 you go down. You don't, you don't uh, bend, bend face, face yeah. down to pick something. You know, there's a way you carry yourself, you bend. And even when you bend that way, you expose yourself as a woman to everybody, did breast area, you expose it to them. You know, in etiquette, we say no to such a thing. You know, these are the things that also affect uh, back pain and it's a bad posture also. But for the shoes, not more than three inches. Your Naira notes, the length is three inches. So that's the way to measure. Thank you so much, Ma. I think we are getting the balance here. I think we're getting the balance. And I think after now, I'm going to check um, the shoes I have. Um, when I wear heels, I try to make sure that they are wide, you know? Yes, and, wide. Uh, and not, I not think sleep. when it's when they are stiletto, that's what actually reduces that stability. And again, there's a tendency for one to, you know, to fall over if one is wearing a stiletto heel. So if at all one has to wear that heel, 
it shouldn't be more than three inches and it should not be worn for too long at a time but it yeah. does help to create some form of a poise you know which is fashionable but like we said the fact that other people are doing it does not necessarily mean you must do it if you know that you are prone to certain things you know you are prone to a back pain or something you don't necessarily have to go for that stiletto they, they are modified ways in which you can um, wear you know your shoes and those shoes too are they are also good ones there is they there call, is one it, that comes to my call mind. it block heels block, block heels, heels. Yes, block heels there's block another heels. one yeah. wedge i think there's also one that they call wedge wedge heels um wedge heels can make you fall too okay wedge heels you know if you're not careful it can and it can throw you off balance can make you fall Okay. So, so I think block heels, heels are, are just better. the best. Yes, oh, okay. much better. Okay. Thank you so much, Ma. I we really appreciate that insight. Um, um Reverend Dr. Ogunumade, someone says I just did the back exercise and I'm feeling pressure on my right thigh. Hope it's normal. Uh, I read that up in the chat box and I may be disturbed about it. And I was about to privately answer the question. But it's good that we openly answer it for the benefit of others. The amount of your inclination forward should be at minimal force. It should not be at much force, and it should not be done swiftly. Look at me through the screen. I'm going forward toward the screen gently. It's different from if I do this. Because if the force is too much, you are going to introduce too much force to your back that is going to give you a lot of pain. Most especially if there has been some silent back pain that has not been so much as uh, so much eye and that has not been attended to, there could be flaring up of it. So what I recommend, what we recommend is gentle forward, which I found very useful. Gentle forward, gentle backward. If you do that, there will not be any of such. But if you now have persistent pain, you stop. The general rule in exercise prescription is that anything you are doing, and it's causing you so much discomfort, you stop. That's what I would say. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, sir. We really appreciate um, that um, explanation. And um, I think that's the last question. We have some other comments. I feel refreshed yeah. after the back exercise. Thank you um, for this insightful presentation. Can I say something? Because I can't type right where I am. Okay, who is speaking, please? Uh, my name is Abim Bola. Okay. You're yeah, welcome, my quick Abim question, Bola. thank you so much. My quick question is, I, I do notice that when I have back pain, it's as a result of stress. When I'm really stressed out, my back pain increases. So I don't know if stress is related to pain, back pain. I just wanted him to answer that too. Thank, thank you very much, Ma, for that question. Yes, if somebody is stressed off, Every other thing in the body is disbalanced. If I will use that word to pass the information across. And one of the things that is disbalanced is the muscles that are either too relaxed, they become tensed up and they become like it's tightened up. That's why you see when people have stress at times, they're going through stress, they will go to spas for, for massage and the like. The intention is to loosen out the knots, to loosen out the tightness that the muscles are so that the muscle will not gain its extensibility, its normal length back, and be able to do the work it's supposed to do. It is a possibility, man. It's one of the areas that one looks at. And you will notice that as soon as those things are attended to, the person gets his or her body mechanism back on course, and the person begins to feel well. Thank you, man, for that observation, which is in place. Thank you, man. Thank you Over so to. much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for that um, answer, sir. I think we're rounding off now. Um, I always feel waist pain when I wake up in the morning. The doctor suggested we change our mattress and we did, yet the pain is still there. I think uh, the, way the, the prescription given by the doctor is in place and I want to believe that you got the right mattress, but if it's still persistent, you need some further examination to know what has really caused the problem for you, whether you need some other forms of treatment instead of just going to continue like that. That would be the suggestion I will pass across, ma'am. I, I, I agree with you totally, sir. Sometimes we can't really um, make a full diagnosis here, but we're 
having this educative, educative session so that people will know how they can prevent some of these um, lifestyle related problems. And then if you're having a problem that is not controlled by all these factors, then it's important for your doctor to be able to, to assess you. But we really want to appreciate you, sir and um, Ma. I think we'll round up now, but in summary, just give us um, maybe a, a one minute take home, you know, to just cover everything that we have, we have learned today. We'll start with you, sir. Thank you very much, Ma. The summary I have for all of us is this. Having learned about postural issue this afternoon, let us have it handy with us all the time. There's something we call postural awareness. If somebody has postural awareness, there will be reduced tendency for poor posture. Let's put in practice all what we have said, whether we are in the society, we are in social functions, or we are in the office, or we are in any system. Let's put all these things into practice. It's going to help us. Now, if paradventure, any pain results as a result of abuse of posture, let's attend to it immediately so that it will not degenerate into anything. And we want to encourage, as part of lifestyle modifications that we have been promoting, let's do a lot of work. Let's reduce our sedentary life. Do you know that when we talk about sedentary life, people look at people that are not employed. But you know it's possible to, for somebody to be employed and also be living a sedentary life. So we need to look at that aspect of our life. If we are employed and we are still living sedentary life because of the demands of our work, we need to remodify, we need to repackage. And like the word I use, we must reset. If we must use high yield shoe, let's, let it be the one with wider base. Because the one with wider base, we introduce more what I call BOS, the base of support, that will increase our stability and reduce the tendency for fall and thereby prevent it sequently that may happen in subsequent, uh, subsequently. I want to appreciate every one of us for staying tuned. It's been a nice time talking to us, and I believe that we have gained a lot of things. Over to you, Ma. Thanks so much, Ma. God bless you, sir. We are, really appreciate you. We have been very well um, educated tonight. Um, I'll welcome um, Mrs. Modupe Aguda to give us her summary. Uh, we've learned so much um, from you tonight, Ma. You know, a, a retired banker, but you know, she's passionate about poise, etiquette, and the mannerisms. And I think some of the things that she has said tonight are very, very key, especially for the younger generation. You're welcome, Ma, for your summary. Thank you, Doctor. Um, what I would say is keep your posture good. You know, you need good etiquette. <clears throat> Excuse me. You need etiquette in every, every area of your life and you need to keep a good posture. It is good for you, good courage um, makes you, makes you uh, respected, it makes you, makes you um, accepted and uh, it gives you confidence. So keep up your good posture, keep up with your good posture and at the same time wear what is comfortable for you. Even if your three inch, is, uh, three inch pair of shoes is becoming uncomfortable, you don't need to wear them. But maintain good posture with anything you wear. If it is flat shoes that you want to maintain, maintain your posture with flat shoes. So all I want to say is wear what is comfortable for you as much as possible. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you so much, Ma. We must wear what is comfortable for us. That, that, that is so key. Um, I'm so happy to have um, listened to you both this evening. Even I, as a medical practitioner, have gained a lot. And I know that everyone in-house has gained. And I can see a lot of um, messages. Oh, yes. Thanks for showing that book, Ma. So this is a book. Mm -hmm. Please, um, let's take a look at um, the book, Prim and Proper. It's a, a book that was written by a speaker on etiquette, poise, and manners. And um, if you want to order this book, um, how do we get it, Ma? Um, you can get it from Ilupeju, number three, BC Lade Jobi Street, Ilupeju. Or you can get it delivered to wherever you are in Lagos. Okay, Ma. So what I will do is that I will, I will get um, 
some of those details so that when we're sending out our next um, email, our newsletter will, in, will include those details. And then we also like to include details in case, case anybody wants to invite you for um, a talk, you know, to address. This she's available. I'm very passionate about this, and I know it will do um, our people, our younger generation, and even those of us who are middle aged and above. It's it's doing us a lot of good. So thanks once again, Ma. We really appreciate you. you. We appreciate you, everyone Ma. in the house. Um, I can see um, Reverend. Mike Babatunde, God bless you, sir. I can see Dr. Sarume, um, Mrs. Um, Uluwole, um, um, Dr. Adelowo, uh, Mr. Adewumi, Olaleko, Mr. Yomi Taiwo, Dr. Lori, Dr. Faremi, Dr. Dabota, Do um, Dr. Ibiemi, Dr. Ajayi, Mrs. Umoren, um, Mr. and Mrs. Umona, Dr. Ogide, um, Mr. Otega, Dr. Otega, Dr. Ileke, Dr. Elimile, Mr. Lawade, Miss, I don't know whether this is Mr. or Mrs. Ogumo Dedi, I'm not sure, pardon me. But I just want to recognize you and appreciate you all for being here. Um, Tishé, Uraola, God bless you. Um, I think this is um, Mr. Ayodele. I'm not sure whether it's a Mr. or Mrs. God bless you. Thanks once again to uh, Mr. Fola Aguda also. Being both, thank you for being here. Thanks for your contribution. Thanks to my co-host, my twin sister, Orekola Day. Thank you so much. So I, I really want to appreciate every one of us. I hope I didn't leave anyone out. Um, I wanted to know that we really appreciate you and we're glad that you were able to make tonight's meeting. And we'll be um, letting you know about other meetings. In case you have not been receiving our newsletters, you can just quickly type your, your email in the chat room before you leave so that we can let you know about upcoming um, um, webinars and educational sessions at um, LCI. So thank you once again. Have a good night. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. God bless. Bye. Bye. Thank you, man. God bless you. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Yeah, thank, thank you. you God bless you. God bless you, sirs. God bless you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everyone. Have a good night, night, everyone. Love from Joss. Thank you so much, sir. Good night, everyone. We appreciate you, man. Good night, everyone. Good, Good night, sir. Good night, Dr. Good night. Good night, sir. Good night, ma. Good night. Oh, <laughs> Pam Mori and uh, Dr. McIndy, I'm sorry. I, I didn't see you earlier. I appreciate you. God bless you. Good night. Good night. Good night.